You are watching the Doc Talk Show. You're still watching the Doc Talk Show where we're discussing typhoid is a, an aggressive uh, bacterial infection that we have very common in this country that we have we, are, we diagnose very commonly and right now we have seen the signs and symptoms we have seen who is at risk and how it is caused from feces of an infected person to the mouth of another person through unsafe water and poor hygiene and poor food handling so in the diagnosis uh, Darius mm. people keep going to to clinics to hospitals and they're told they have typhoid they either provided a stool sample or a blood sample but we want to understand how should typhoid be diagnosed if I go to a health facility and they tell me I have typhoid I want to be sure really is it typhoid or the usual things that I've been hearing okay so typhoid is a germ it's caused by that bacterium which likes to live in the human body we commonly find isolates or where we where the germ is identified we commonly find it in stool samples mm -hmm. that's when someone passes out the fecal matter or in the blood right because it tends to circulate either in the blood or in the stool samples where it's passed out and mm -hmm. the transmission is continued to someone else so regarding the diagnosis there are different ways to diagnose typhoid however i must say some of the ways are not as may not be as accurate mm. as others right they do not provide us with the right results yes as so i'll start with the most common one which is very common in our uh, in our situation it is called the widow test yes everyone right? goes and says i've done widow i've done yes. widow it's a very common test you find everywhere in uganda so what what is a widow test exactly it means the we, the test identifies antibodies you know when your body gets an infection the body responds by producing antibodies against the germ so these tests look for these antibodies that may predict that there is a typhoid mm -hmm. within the body right those are called antibody tests yes it's very similar to like the tests of hiv mm -hmm. or malaria they're all yes. antibody tests they yes. look for antibodies mm -hmm. against an infection the problem with this test is it has very it has a high rate of what they call false positives mm -hmm. That means it will tell you, yes, there's typhoid, yet in actual sense, you don't have typhoid. there is no typhoid. And what percentage of, because this is the most important bit, that test that everybody does, every lab does, what percentage of false positives do we have from WIDO? So in a study that was done some time back, they were checking the sensitivities and the accuracies of these tests, they found that the false positive rate, that means the error mm -hmm. in the test in detecting the typhoid, mm -hmm. was up to 80%. It means of the 100 people who are presumed to have typhoid, mm -hmm. up to 80% were wrongly diagnosed that they had typhoid. So 8 out so of every 10? That very high rate of error makes it a very unreliable test. But the problem is it's the most widely used, mm -hmm. most and available. And affordable and accessible. Yes. So the doctors and clinicians should be very careful when using the widow test mm. to diagnose someone with typhoid what is acceptable universally internationally mm -hmm. with a higher degree of sensitivity are what they call cultures yes so cultures are tests whereby you get a sample for example a stool sample or a blood sample mm -hmm. you take it to a lab they process it and they grow the organism they see is the typhoid growing over a number of days over a number it's not of the days. one where you yes, go in the morning an and they give you results in that it's thing. usually in about a week's time five yes. to seven days they grow the organism under certain laboratory conditions and they see which organism has grown from the stool mm -hmm. which organism has grown from mm -hmm. the blood if it is typhoid they will indeed find yes there are typhoid germs if it is tb they'll find tb mm -hmm. if it is another bacteria they'll find something mm -hmm. else so that is the most accepted diagnosis for typhoid mm, but this is not very available it's not, not everybody it's not available will, will it's a bit expensive that's the that's the setback so yes. what is currently being done is we can use a combination of tests we can use the clinical mm -hmm. symptoms when you have already come in and the doctor has someone seen and comes assessed. yeah someone comes to the clinic and says i have fever headache stomach pains diarrhea the doctor is thinking okay this may be typhoid all right mm. so they After might maybe and a negative malaria test yes and the negative they ruled out malaria ruled out other infections mm. so some people might 
do a widow test, others will do a culture, a culture test. Mm -hmm. Either way, what is most important is making sure you have a high index of suspicion of the disease, right? yeah. of the disease and we treat it properly. Okay, All good. Right? So I'm hoping that we've gotten this very well. You know, many of us are our own doctors. We diagnose ourselves and go. you've seen even when you're in a hospital setting, Typhoid is not as easy to diagnose as we normally think. Mm. That Most even when it's just a widow test, and uh, actually uh, I forget another thing with the widow test is um, a number of diseases can make a widow test turn positive. Oh yes, right? and that's what also contributes to its false positive rate. Mm -hmm. You can find another disease, a concurrent infection, may it produce an antibody that will resemble the typhoid. And the doctor will tell you, you have typhoid. typhoid. It's actually another disease in the body. So we do, wouldn't really encourage people to, to rely so rely much, so much on, on, on the, the widow, widow test. And go preaching to everybody. Because with typhoid, the moment you keep saying, I have typhoid, everyone realizes you've eaten feces. Okay. That's the easiest explanation, that you've eaten feces from somebody else, not even your own feces. Exactly. But then you've mentioned so, that some diseases do mimic typhoid. What are these diseases that will now look like typhoid? We have said malaria, it is, it is like a cousin to malaria, it looks mm. like malaria. But what are these other diseases that could be mistaken for typhoid? So, you think in diseases that cause fever, mm. most of the infectious diseases will cause fever. Mm. Malaria, you see, pneumonia, it can also be a stomach infection, gastroenteritis. It can be an infection also, like a nose or a throat infection. Influenza. Which, or a viral infection. Yeah which has spread into the body and has caused symptoms of fever, right? So there's a bit of a wide spectrum of diseases. That Very many diseases, even cholera itself, because yeah. it causes diarrhea, might be mistaken for typhoid. for typhoid is actually cholera. So I think a point here is very clear. We must be very sure of the diagnosis. Before you start typhoid treatment, be very sure of the diagnosis. Now this rolls us into typhoid treatment. And, and where possible, ask for a culture. Ask, it, yes, it is, now much, that you it know. is much better than a widow test. Yes, now that you know, please stop these backdoor laboratories. Most likely they will not offer you culture tests. So go for a fully fledged health facility that can give you culture tests. Otherwise, you'll keep treating typhoid and treating typhoid, which exactly. either does not it exist. Maybe the reason why people keep saying they have, they have typhoid. I have, they have typhoid. typhoid. They have typhoid. Because you've even. It's actually the test being used which is given the wrong. The wrong results, result, yes. yes. You are watching. The Dog Talk Show.